Divorce regrets. Six months later, divorcing my husband was a huge mistake. This one is long, but worth it for everyone to read. If I could give anyone a piece of advice for divorce it would be to not do it under normal circumstances. If your spouse is beating you or threatening you or your children, then of course get out and fast. In my case there was no abuse. We were together for 8 years that was mostly good, and we have 4 kids. Right around 5 years, I got a promotion at work and I got it in my head that my ex-husband was dragging me down, or at least holding me back from more success and a better life. We never had a lot of money, but with my promotion I was now making more than he was. I started working longer hours and at the same time his hours were cut, so he was at home more. I really began to resent him, because he was home and because he got to spend time with our kids. Most nights when I got home, they were already getting ready for bed if not already sleeping. After a few months of my new job, it was clear to me that things were not going well at home without me there. Some nights, the dishes weren't done when I got home, or the kids hadn't eaten or whatever else I could think of to be mad at him about. It really didn't matter. He kept saying that he would try harder, but that it was hard being home all the time. That always made me really mad. For the next couple years things kept getting worse. My hours weren't any shorter and his were on and off full time. There was no convenient time for him to be working full time because of my hours, but we also needed the money. Whenever he would tell me that he could get extra hours I would always complain and the less hours he worked, the more I complained that he wasn't bringing in enough money. Whenever he brought up the contradiction, I would tell him that he needed to figure it out. I knew that it would bother him, so I started saying that a lot and for everything that I could. I really started to resent him and I pulled away from him. I knew that it was hurting him, but I didn't care. If he didn't want to be hurt, then he would at least try to make me happy. I used that same thing to justify when I started to talk to another guy at work. I thought he was just a friend but talking at work turned into texting at home and then pictures and videos, and then trying to sneak some alone time with him. I knew that it was wrong, but it made me feel so alive, and my husband had not made me feel like that in years. I was tired of being unhappy and, I was doing this for me. The worst was the night that I came home at a reasonable time and found that he had cleaned the whole house, cooked the whole family dinner and picked out a movie for all of us to watch together. This would have made me swoon a couple years earlier, but that night I couldn't even look at him and I pretended to be sick. I spent the rest of the night in bed while he waited on me and checked on me and even made me different food and brought it to me in bed. It made me feel terrible, and then it made me angry that he made me feel that way, and by the end of the night I was texting with the other guy. Over the next month or two from that night it did not matter what he did. He was wrong just for breathing most days. He would get so upset with how I was treating him, and I would just wait and egg him on into losing it because I knew it would happen eventually. After most of the fights we had, he would apologize for whatever I told him he did wrong, if there even was something, but I never did. I would usually find a way to make him feel even worse. I knew that I was right because he was wrong, and that was all that mattered to me. I even pretended that I didn't care when he found out about my relationship with the guy from work. It really destroyed me inside to see him holding back tears, but I wasn't going to let him see that. He was at his weakest, and that was when I chose to tell him that I wanted a divorce. I could almost hear his heart shattering inside his chest. He talked and fought, and said that we could work through it together. I really wasn't interested in fixing our marriage, but I mostly ended things with the other guy, but only because I knew I could get it back if I wanted it. I could see that he was trying. And occasionally I would let him know, but for the most part I kept being a huge witch to him for any and all reasons that I could think of. I'm not sure how much more the man could have done to make me happy, besides finding a job that paid enough for me to not have to work at all. He said that he was looking, but looking and finding are two different things. It was around this time that I discovered this group and a few others. I started posting things about him, from my perspective only, and I got so much positive feedback for how I was feeling, that I knew I was right. The more I posted the more validation that I got. It wasn't just me who knew that ex-husband wasn't worth keeping around. I had the whole internet telling me how terrible he is. I started saying awful things to him and even outright ignoring him. I was so confident with mine and everyone else's opinion that I contacted a lawyer, and within a couple weeks had filed for divorce. I continued to use this site and a couple others to validate my feelings and for encouragement to go through with it, and finally it was done. It went pretty smoothly. Ex-husband didn't ask for much besides to not get divorced and to try to work it all out. I didn't care about that though. He was broken, but I was free. I could do whatever I wanted, without having to feel any guilt or answer to anybody. It was an amazing feeling of freedom. It didn't last long though. In the first month after he moved out, I missed garbage day three times. 
There was also rarely a single clean dish and the laundry sat in piles, so long that I had to start doing the sniff test to see if it could be worn again. I also never saw my kids more miserable. My oldest had seen some of the messages from the other guy months earlier, and she knew that ex-husband still wanted to try to work it out. It didn't take her long to stop talking to me at all, except to say that she wanted to go to ex-husband's house. The others all told me that they wanted to live with ex-husband too. I did my best to try to make them happy, but I ended up just buying them toys all the time and the happiness only lasted minutes. I also was having a lot of trouble with work. Being alone, I couldn't work all those extra hours that I was expected to. I finally gave in and started calling ex-husband to watch the kids. He would always come over as soon as he could, and he always asked me if I needed anything. When I would get home, I would find clean dishes and laundry and even dinner sometimes. He would never say too much after I got home. He would just say to call him if I needed anything and leave. One night he took out the garbage and brought it to the curb, because it was garbage night and I forgot again. He always looked so sad when it was time to go. Finally, after a couple months my friends convinced me to go out on a date. It was for dinner and a movie and I was excited and hopeful, but at dinner I started getting a feeling of overwhelming guilt. It got so bad that I ended up not even going to the movie. A week and about a million tears later, I was on a therapist's couch. I told her everything that had happened, starting with the promotion that I got at work. She did not agree with me or with any of the encouragement to divorce that I got. I ended up in her office two and sometimes three times a week, and the more that I talked to prove that I was right, the more that I started to see how wrong I was. It was truly heartbreaking. I don't know if I cried as much in my whole life as I did in the first month in her office. After about $2,000 of therapy sessions, I learned that my ex-husband had his faults, but I figured out that mine were so much worse. I did so many awful things and said awful things that I wouldn't want to be with me, but he did. I still remember him asking me in the meeting with the lawyer to please not go through with it. I did go through with it though, and then later I bragged on here how great it felt. I was so wrong, and now I can see it. A couple weeks ago, I went outside with him when he was leaving the house. I asked him about getting back together. When he looked at me his eyes were full of tears and a couple went down his cheeks. He told me that he didn't know if he could. He said that the pain has been too much for too long, and that if we got back together that I might just turn around and do it to him again. He said that he always thought that I would realize how much he loved me and stop, up until I signed the divorce papers and let out a big over-exaggerated sigh of relief. He said that hurt him more than anything else, and that he doesn't know if he can ever trust me again. I don't blame him. I destroyed a man, who, looking back, was a great husband. I deprived my kids of having a great father in the house with them and I took his kids away from him. And me, the one who pushed for the divorce expecting happiness and a life of freedom, spend all my free time sitting at home or sitting on a therapist's couch. Please don't just take the advice of anyone on this site or any other about getting a divorce. If your marriage is bad look at yourself first and see if you can make changes. This is advice for men and women. Getting divorced is not fun. Being divorced is not fun. And seeing your husband broken and your children never happy because of your actions, is the most painful experience that I can imagine. I wish all of you well and hope that you will give your marriages a second chance. Now for the top comments. I hope he doesn't take you back. This. She sounds awful and he deserves someone so much better. My ex did worse. Used me for schooling 100g over the years, I worked full time, she was in school had an affair after treating me like crap. I tried to salvage for two years then she took me to the cleaners, after I said I would not be just roommates. Now threatening to take full custody as I picked up more work to make up how she left me broke. I could never take her back. She is happy living with a fair partner. 2 OP, my ex-wife could have written this post so I feel like I may have an idea how your soon-to-be ex-husband feels. A year after the divorce my ex-wife came to visit the kids and begged for me to talk to her as I was no contact on any topic not about the kids. She lamented her cheating, her cruelty, her constant fault-finding, but mostly, she said she missed my friendship and could we please try again. Oh, how I longed to hear those words. I would have paid any price, made any promise, done anything to try again, but for the divorce. She was so happy hitting me over the head with it, and how happy she was going to be without me in her life. It broke me. My heart and my soul, my self-worth were tied up in our marriage, and she destroyed all of it. I couldn't possibly go back to her. I had escaped a prisoner of war camp, never to return. Dear OP, you are asking your ex-husband to return to APOW camp with only the weakest promise that the commandant won't torture and cruelly abuse him this time. 
it is too big of a risk for him to take. Please tell me that you are going to let him start having overnights with his kids. He and they don't deserve to be punished for the choices that you made. For real. Unless there's a factor of abuse, I can never understand people who don't attempt 50-50 custody. What did you bring to the relationship with your husband, who, by interpreting your words, brought you unconditional love? Could you tell us what exactly you are missing from the marriage, could you tell us what exactly you are missing from the marriage, aside from the fact that being single is hard work? Now for the next story. She regrets it. We divorced a year ago, and it destroyed me. After 12 years and two kids together, she cheated with a co-worker, left me for him. Everyone told me that she would regret what she was doing, but she was so cold and sure, that I was the one who ended up filing. After the divorce she bought a small house and the guy lives with her. My kids live with this man for half their lives. I really try not to think about it too much, but it sucks. I have a girlfriend I met soon after the divorce and we've fallen in love, so I stopped thinking about the ex very much. Then a few days ago I get a call from her, which is strange because we barely talk. She was asking if I was happy. Saying that she has no family or support network here. She's unhappy. She missed us being a family. She asked if she would ever have a chance with me again. I would have given anything to hear those words last winter. I wanted so badly to save my family. But I've moved on, and I'm never going back. I told her no. I told her that I would always be there to help with the kids. It hurts to know she's suffering, to know she completely messed up her life for this a-hole, but I'm done. The hardest thing to let go of is wanting to take care of her, and even now I just want her to be okay. Now for the comments. Wow, that had to be tough to hear. There had to be a small part that was satisfied to hear she admitted she screwed up, yet all the pain you went through and now you've moved on. Makes you think if she wouldn't have screwed up, you'd see your kids every day. My situation is similar. She cheated with a co-worker, I divorced her, we split time with the kids. The guy's still in the picture. I'm still healing, haven't found anyone, I'm not ready for that. I've been asked if I'd take her back if she admitted how bad she screwed up. The answer is no, there were too many things that were said and done for me to forgive, and there's no way to ever trust her again. You would think that I'd feel some satisfaction, but all I felt was sadness and pity for where she is at. She's pretty much trapped with this guy as he's her support network now. She probably can't cover the mortgage and bills without his help. She sees that I'm doing so much better post-divorce, I got really fit. I have a beautiful girlfriend and moved to the city. She knows she threw away a good thing for a crappy thing. I always knew that she would see it, but it doesn't feel good to know it now. Dude I feel for you, and fear this could be my soon to be ex in a year. As a man, I don't know how we get past the desire to support them and be there for them forever. It's just how some of us are wired. Sadly, only the good men are wired this way. Even more sad is that the women, who would be perfect for men like you, have already been destroyed by the ones not like you. It's just nuts when you think about it. She may think she regrets her decision, but getting back together wouldn't work out in the end. The conditions that led her to cheat in the first place would still be there. It may be an unpopular opinion, but I believe an affair is a symptom of the problem, not the problem in and of itself. She was unhappy and looked for happiness with someone else. If she's still unhappy, she needs to keep looking and not try to go back in time. I think she needs to figure out it wasn't his job to make her happy. That may be if she was able to grow and learn, that it was always her inner unhappiness that was the root cause of her problems. Maybe then they could move forward. Now for the last story. X wants to move back in, told her no. A little background. Married for 15 years, wife left to move in with boyfriend in a different state about a year ago. We divorced as quickly after that as possible. Three kids. I got full custody in the divorce in a state where that is very rare. So, my ex shows up at my doorstep because she's leaving her boyfriend. My kids let her inside because it's mom, and I haven't told them not to, I'm not sure if I should or not, my issues with their mother aren't theirs to deal with and I want them to have as best a relationship they can with her. Anyway. She just wants me to hold her, so I hug her for a minute and then she lets me know she's leaving her boyfriend and she wants to move back into the spare bedroom, if possible. I tell her no, it's not possible, why doesn't she move in with her parents till she's back on her feet? She says she doesn't want her mom telling her she told her so. I just rolled my eyes and let the conversation die. I wanted to fix it for her still. It took a lot to just sit there and say nothing till she got uncomfortable enough to leave. 
maybe I should have just told her to get out. I don't know, I know she can't be in my life again. Top comments. Good for you for standing your ground, it's not easy to be in your position. I think you showed remarkable restraint. You seemed very aware of thinking about your children and their point of view during the whole incident. I'm not surprised someone selfish enough to walk out on her family for her boyfriend, would think the world still revolves around them. Almost as if her life with your family, was on pause and static while she was gone. I mean. At least there was some level of awareness. She asked for the spare bedroom at least. Which is still ridiculous. You ever see that episode of Futurama when Bender becomes something like a god to some race? I love a quote from it, when you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. You're doing it right. You held your ground and remained civil and courteous. The right thing is rarely easy or popular. Tough call, but the right call. You're very gracious for being cordial. But dude, she left you, it didn't work out so she now needs your help? Not trying to crank you up, but never forget she cheated on you, and walked out not only on you, but the kids. It ain't right. Again, commend you on doing what's right by letting her in because of the kids. Hugging her? I guess it's noble and I probably would do the same. But letting her stay in the spare room? That'd be a hard no. You don't need to bring that crazy into your home or life. I'd politely say you're more than welcome to come to the house and visit the boys anytime you'd like. And leave it at that. Do everything you can to help her relationship with the kids, but don't compromise your sanity. And for God's sake, don't let her weasel back into your life after she clearly and deliberately crap on you. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. Turn the notification on to get updated on my latest posts.